Mr. Howard, let me ask you about the Iraq war. Mm. Um, how much did the weight of decision making to join the invasion of Iraq was that based on disarming Saddam Hussein? And how much of it was based on fidelity to the U.S. alliance? An Iraqi regime faced with its own demise may attempt cruel and desperate measures. If Saddam Hussein orders such measures, his generals would be well advised to refuse those orders. Mr. Howard, let me ask you about the Iraq war. Mm. Um, how much did the weight of decision making to join the invasion of Iraq, was that based on disarming Saddam Hussein? And how much of it was based on fidelity to the US alliance? Well, there was a, a, a bringing together of those things. Certainly the justification in international law and international politics was the disarming of Iraq, but Fundamentally, it was also an expression uh, of the strength of our alliance with the United States, and it's something that the Australian people saw in that context. Of course, the intelligence which the invasion was based on turned out to be flawed, and there were no weapons of mass destruction found. Um, is it embarrassing to look back on that reality? Well, certainly there were no stockpiles, but there were weapons of mass destruction programs, in other words, the plans, the capacity to produce uh, weapons of mass destruction, that was embarrassing, it was disappointing, it was in, you know, it, it caused uh, a great deal of frustration and anger, but of course the absence of the stockpiles was not uh, realised uh, until after the invasion had taken place, and I think the greater uh, disappointment and criticism in of the aftermath was the civil disorder into which Iraq descended uh, following the invasion. If you knew then what you know now, would you have made the same decision? <laughs> well, <clears throat> that's an impossibly hypothetical question, Troy. All I can say is that I do not regret the decision it was the right one given the information available to us at the time it was taken. Now, I don't know the mind of the terrorist. By definition, you can't put yourself in the mind of a successful suicide bomber. I can only look at objective facts. And the objective facts are, as I've cited, the objective evidence is that Australia was a terrorist target uh, long before the operation in Iraq. And uh, indeed, all the evidence, as distinct from the suppositions, suggests to me uh, that this is about hatred of a way of life. This is about the perverted use of the principles of the great world religion that at its root preaches peace and cooperation. And I think we lose sight of the challenge we have if we allow ourselves to see these attacks in the context of particular circumstances rather than uh, the abuse uh, uh, through a perverted ideology uh, uh, of, of people and their murder.